So we've been talking today about every atoms that could be ruining your health. But for some people, everyday noises can be the culprit. That was meant to exaggerate, be a little funny. That's a common situation that all of us experience from time to time. But there is a very real condition. It's called misophonia, which should be taken seriously. Emma knows this all too well. I suffer from a condition called misophonia. It literally is translated to mean hatred of sound. We first started to notice Emma's problem with sounds when she was around eight years old. Emma didn't like the sound of crunching, chips especially. It progressed to computer keys. Sniffling. Clicking. Chewing. Smacking. Eating. Swallowing. And breathing. Our people are chewing and chewing and smacking Immediately after I hear a sound, my body will get really hot. I begin to shake, I get short of breath. I get so agitated to the point where I'm almost enraged. The sounds that people usually wouldn't pick up on are very aggravating to me. It really has affected every aspect of her life. Emma is here with her mother, Diane. Thank you both so much for joining us. And, you know, Emma, before we talk to you, I do want to ask Dr. Sears if, if this is something that you see often in your practice. You know, I see it in my practice. This is a lot more common than people think. A lot of the kids, when this, when this starts, maybe mid-childhood, they tend to obsess about these sounds, and so often they're maybe misdiagnosed as OCD at, at the beginning, or even some people start thinking autism, because as soon as a child's sensitive to sounds, they start thinking autism, but it's different. Kids with autism tend to be any noise, but these are very specific noises. Emma, could you tell early on that there were certain noises that were bothering you, but not other people? Oh yeah, they started really bothering me around the age of nine. It started just with eating sounds, especially with family members, and then it really graduated onto computer keys, video game buttons, and now my main trigger is sniffling, and it's just kind of amplified over time. And we actually have joining us on the phone now an audiologist who actually specializes in misophonia, Dr. Marsha Johnson. Dr. Johnson, is what you're hearing from Emma's story, is that consistent with a lot of folks that you take care of who have misophonia? Yes, yes it is. Uh, it has been over 15 years now since I started my focus on misophonia and her story precisely mirrors those of others. This is not something that the child chooses. This is not something that they dream up or select. It's a physiologic disorder with an identical etiology, meaning that millions of these people around the world have the same kind of onset. And this suggests to us maybe a genetic predisposition. Is there any treatment that's available? Yes, we have a treatment a protocol we're using for the last year, the misophonia management protocol, and so far about 85% of these people have gone through the program are finding improvement. Emma, have you noticed certain things that you can do to help decrease your sens sensitization to these sounds? The best I can do is when I'm removed from the situation, such as school or work, I use a lot of you know, yoga techniques such as relaxation, breathing, to live in the present moment, to know that at, at this moment I have some peace and I just need to accept that because anxiety can start to build about the situations where I will fear going to school in the morning, I'll fear going to work. So to be able to relax, maybe go outside and go for a hike or something like that, to just be away from the sounds itself really brings me a lot of relief. But in the precise moment where I'm being triggered, there's really nothing I can do to calm down the reaction. Well, we heard that relaxing helped you yeah. with this, and we wanted to thank you personally for being here, sharing this story with so many people who've never heard about misophonia. And because relaxing helps you, we're going to send you and a guest on a five-night yoga retreat to Kripalu, which is located in the beautiful Berkshire Hills of Western Massachusetts.